Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia, with a new Schofield Study Bible. Now, Schofield, he gave rise to dispensationalism. Some people say he was the first one that put notes in the Bible from since the Middle Ages. You know, um, there was ancient Bible commentaries on the 13, 14, 1500s. Um, you can still get a lot of those. Nicholas of Lyra, stuff like that. I've done some Bible videos on all that. And then here he comes and puts it back in the text. Now, there were family Bibles that had uh, these in the text as well. So Schofield came out with this Bible in 1909, had a great thing in the back called Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth. In 1917, he took that out and came out with the public domain edition. And then in 1967, some preeminent scholars got together and updated the Schofield. And we're gonna look at the differences between the new Schofield, the 1967 Schofield, and the current Schofield. And there's really basically only two differences. They're still put out by Oxford University Press. But uh, the one difference I'm, I'm fixing to show you that a lot of people don't like, some people do, is that they actually updated the King James. Now, what the Schofield Bible did is archaic or difficult to understand words, they put it in the center column reference. What the new Schofield did, and I just turned to Exodus 1919. What the new Schofield did is it put, I'll show you an example, the King James word, the King James word in the center column and put the modernized word in the text. So it's actually not 100% of King James. Now it says it's the King James. It says it's the authorized version, on and on and so forth. But it's actually not 100% the King James. Now I did want to go over some of these people with you. Um, Frank E. Gablin is a name in evangelical scholarship. William Culbertson is as well. Charles Feinberg with archaeology is. Um, Wilbur Smith, you know, Christian evidences, fantastic. And then, of course, John Walvoord, uh, President Dallas Theological. He was, you know, this mammoth guy in eschatology and, and other things in Christianity. So it, it was supposed to be kind of a... Uh, a revised uh, but real conservative edition. I'm going to show you here the prefaces to the 1909 and the 1917 editions. But the other thing it did is some of his theology it weakened and people noticed that in the notes. So as you're reading, the notes are not all Schofield's notes. Now, I'm going to guess that the Schofield Study Bible has been um, the best-selling study Bible at least till the year 2000. Now I'm thinking it may be the Life Application Study Bible. So other than that, it's just a basic Schofield Study Bible. The, some of the notes have been changed. Um, they did keep many of the chronologies. I don't know if they kept all the chronologies, which uh, Schofield was very conservative in his chronologies. Has a good what happened between the Old and the New Testament. Great introductions. And it is not red letter. Now, I think you can actually get a Schofield in the red letter, but these are not the red letter additions. So I've actually, years ago when I used to sell Bibles, I've actually sold new Schofields and people would bring them back because they would say it's not exactly like the Schofield. There's still, this has kind of like a small following out there that there's people that just really love the new Schofield. I would say that the old Schofields of 1909, 1917 still outsell 
the uh, new Schofield, and now the Schofield's in many different translations, but you, Oxford still prints a Schofield. You can buy local church Bible publishing still publishes an incredible quality Schofield. Another thing a lot of people don't like about the Oxford Schofield is it's not the Cambridge text. It is the Oxford text. It's not a pure Cambridge text of which there's at least three material differences. I did a video on the pure Cambridge text if you want to look that up. But it, so it is different very slight but still they mean the same thing basically but there's slight differences and many people would would be very strong in the Cambridge text so but you're going to get that with any of the Schofields Barber Publishing's currently publishing the 1909 edition and again Oxford and some other places local church Bible publishing and are still publishing the 1917 edition but Schofield you could not underestimate the impact even on world events where we get most of evangelical eschatology and fundamentalist eschatology the rapture of the church comes from dispensational C.I. Schofield and so it's had this huge thing even on the world stage people I'll read things well Trump's trying to fulfill prophecy they're trying to blow everything up and evangelical leaders cheer because tribulation is about to come which means Jesus is coming back and all that none of that is true nobody is re we're wanting you know even so come quickly Lord Jesus but we want everybody to come in and Jesus is going to come back when he comes in comes back so you can teach prophecy without going overboard and I don't know of anybody going overboard but that's how it's interpreted by non-Christians sometimes Schofield New Schofield 1967 edition God bless you talk with you later